friends, from today we will start one new series of lectures and that is the fragrance of Vedanta. The Vedanta as a whole is the Upanishads. They are the Upanishads are the Vedanta. And to make the Upanishads understandable, the different type of scriptures have come and the contribution of Sri Shankaracharya is great. We will start from today with this Viveka Churamani. The Vedanta means discrimination. Discrimination between the truth and the untruth. D discrimination, understanding between the temporary and the permanent. But how? That is the main question. So everybody is asking to, you should discriminate. And all this world is illusory. Mithyam, mithyam, sarvai mithyam. That they say all that you see is nothing but the false, false and false. So, but the thing, when I touch my body, I feel it. I feel hungry. I feel sorrow. I feel joy. And so many things, how can I simply say it is false? There is nothing. That is not possible. So to make this thing, slowly, slowly, Shankaracharya, this is the very subtle truth that is already there within us, but we are not aware of our th about this. So slowly, Shankaracharya will bring that with the help of Prakarana Grantha. So let us start the best Prakarana Granta, the helping the scriptures, that is called Viveka Churamani, and we'll study that. Shankara is beginning the, it is the tradition of all people, the always giving the, the whole thing to the Guru. They are writing, they are doing, but they won't take the credit. That is the beauty. So they give it to the Guru, why I have got all this knowledge from the Guru. So he is offering the pranam to Guru, but in a very, very wonderful way. Shankara, the best mind, a very, very intelligent. So within 30 years, he has accomplished all this. You can imagine how intelligent he was. So this, he is mentioning and offering his respect to Guru in a wonderful disguise that he is giving it to the supreme being. So please chant after me the first sloka <coughs> Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tama Gocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadguram Pranatoshmaham This is the book that is having 581 verses that begins with offering the respect to the Guru <coughs> and also the God. We will come to that. But with the salutation, it goes to God and the Guru, both. Because his Guru's name was Govinda. But in reality, he is meaning, Govinda means one who is the master, he is the all senses, master of all senses, Govinda. And Krishna's one name, one of the names of Krishna is also Govinda. So this Govinda, he is indicating both. And here we find this Shankaracharya who lived only in 788 AD to 820 AD. This 30, 32 years within that it's completed. And he reestablished Hinduism. So we must know about in brief about the Shankaracharya. He reestablished Hinduism. Why? Because in, in the meantime, Buddhism swept the whole land of India. Anywhere you go, Buddhism crept in. 
Even in that, the famous, uh, the ruins of the temple that uh, we went, we found that is the temple was built uh, in uh, for the Vishnu, Vishnu Bhagavan. But even then, they are claiming that this is Buddhist temple. The same way, in the same style, they have placed one Buddha statue and they said, no, it, is a, it was a Buddhist temple, Hindus are only captured it. And that way they are trying to say this is our Jagannath temple. That also they claim, no, Jagannath was actually a Buddhist temple and then afterwards the Hindus, they captured it. So that way we can understand almost everywhere, Dharma Puja, Dharma Devata is nothing but the remnants of the Buddhism. So Buddhism swept the whole world. And what was the philosophy of the Buddhism? Buddha didn't say anything. He never said that this is the God that you should realize. Rather he said, improve your moral life by satya, by these and that. So obviously it was open for the philosophers to explain. And they explained in such a way a nihilism came, sunyavada. So that sunyavada, it is nothing is there, that was spreaded and Shankaracharya had to count up that to reestablish the Hinduism. Second, the Hinduism went went in the hands of some people who were thinking Hinduism means only rituals and nothing else. The philosophical aspect was completely gone. So obviously it was again the another front the Shankara had to fight. He was fighting establishing the Advaita Vedanta, the one that is there and there is no two. So he was countering this. Our very intelligent ancestors, whom we call as Rishis, they discovered an eternal transcendental being. Eternal is never changing, it is always there. But at the same time, transcendental is beyond our senses. That being, eternal and transcendental being, they gave the name Brahman. Why they give the name Brahman? Because there is no other option. Suppose you don't give the name, then how you will indicate? Our mind can understand anything if there is a form and a name. So just the moment you say the Lemont Hindu temple, you give the place and the Hindu temple. It's not Muslim temple or the Buddhist temple or any other Hindu temple. So obviously name and the form, it is there. So time, space and causation, these are all things beyond that. We cannot explain. But still we, you have to take the mind over there. So give the name Brahman. So that eternal transcendental being is beyond our sensory system. We can understand everything with our sensory system. Chakshu, Karna, Nashika, Jiva, Tak. There's sometimes you are passing through that some path and there's a beautiful fragrance. So immediately you can realize, oh, this is a good place. And some sight, the Chakshu, some sound. So that way only we can understand. Beyond the five, we cannot. And we just simply say there is nothing. But we have to go beyond these five senses. How? Because our mind conception is only through the five. The mind is nothing but that intellectual cause which is analyzing and giving a result. Your eyes goes on an object, comes back and says somebody is coming. And immediately that somebody, it has visualized, you send it to the mind, it analyzes and says, oh, this is my uncle. It takes fraction, fraction of a second. And immediately we go, oh, hello, uncle, how are you? So nice to see you. So that way the reaction, how it is having? Only through the eye. 
Suppose there is no eyes to the smell, all but the touch. The blind people, their whole world is nothing but smell and touch. So they hear, they smell, they touch, but can't see. So other things are there. So this is called sensory world. Beyond this, since there was only one being, now the one question is coming. Since there was only one being in the beginning, sad eva samya idam agra asit. In Sanskrit, they say in the beautiful way, O Somya, O beautiful one, O dear one, the father is teaching the son. O dear one, there was only one and no two. Idam agra asit. Idam means this all that you see. Agra, in the beyond this, only one was there. Now naturally, the question will come, so now where from all these varieties have come? If there is only one thing, so where from this variety has come? From that one only. So if that one has become so many, now another question comes. That means the one is not there. It has become so many. No, that cannot be eternal. As because it is eternal, so obviously it cannot change. Now very confusing. You are telling that all that we see, we touch, we listen, we feel, has come from the one. Now naturally the one has become so many, they say no. So how is it? So philosophy is necessary. Analysis is necessary. Otherwise ordinary people don't understand how the one has become so many. So they say there are two different system of understanding. One, vibartha bada. Vibartha is system. Vibartha. It's the change, but it is an appearance only. You see the change, but it is an appearance. It's not true. When you see the movie on the big screen, we see a whole, whole thing, story is going on. And we are carried with that story. Sometimes we are excited, sometimes we are crying. And so many things happen. There's so much attached to that, but in reality, that is not true. That someone put off the light and then it don't, never moves, it is white only. So two things come to understand. One, there must be something always static on which the temporary things are moving. So this is one. And second call, parinam bada. Vibartha bada, the system of transformation is appearance, is not true. And the system of transformation is true. So that is called Purinama. The milk has become yogurt. Purinama. Now you give back my milk if you demand. No, that is, I don't want, I gave you one liter of milk to make it that yogurt. You have make, made it, but I don't want this. Now give back my milk. How that will come? This? Because it has already become paribartan, changed, changed completely into that form. That is unique. So if the Brahman, the one has become many and in that fashion, then you cannot ask the Brahman, no, I don't like to this form, I like to go back to Brahman. Give me my Brahman at, no, you cannot. It has become like this and it is absurd. It cannot be. Things are changing. There must be something static. So what is that static? Now it says like this, to prove that there is only one unchanging reflected as many in this changing world, Advaita has proved it through two different methods. How? One is through philosophy. 
through arguments. And another is through realization. The Lord Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he told swearing in the name of the Divine Mother, there is God. You can talk to God, you can see God. There's realization. If you go and argue with him, you won't listen. The similarly, the rishis, after the realization, they with emphatically, they are telling, there is Brahman, there is only one from which everything has come. All that you see is nothing but the reflection. So Sadaiva Brahma Idam Agra Asit, there was only Brahman, there's only one eternal entity. He is telling to his son. So first he, the Rishi and his son, they're all different, but still he is telling now only one. From the realization. So when we realize it, then it's completely different. If you go to a place, your realization, because you have visited that place, you have come back and you say, oh, forget about that. You know that previously, the Indian people used to dream, their swarga, their heaven was London and nothing else. All the rich people, they used to accumulate the money only to go to London. And once they go to London, my God, when they come back, as if they want to walk on the, on the land. Say, I have visited London, you know. So there's a fun, it's not true, I don't know. The one gentleman came to Rabindranath. He's a Bengali gentleman, he visited London. After visiting, you know, to go London was mo one month al almost by ship. And again by, so naturally he spent a few, few, couple of months over there. And when he came back, he was speaking, trying to speak in English with the Rabindranath. But it was completely wrong, broken English. So Rabindranath told, why don't you speak in Bengali? It's your mother tongue. Oh, I'm sorry. Say, I was in London, I have forgotten Bengali. <laughs> And Rabindranath commented. I don't know whether it's true or not. It's just, so he commented, oh my God, what will happen to you? You have forgotten your mother tongue and you have learned, the, no, you have not learned the English. How you will express yourself? <laughs> so that is the way we used to think. Now you go to London, after living in America, how do you feel? The narrow roads, small, small houses, oh, this is London? Well, our America is better. So obviously, experience. And if you go to someone in India, if we say, and we were also feeling like that, any Videsha, any foreign country, they are, oh my God, you are coming from there? And they will look at you at least something special. What is there? Everywhere the same. How we understand it? Through experience. Direct experience. Realization of the truth. And then obviously, if someone comes and tells you in a flowery language that this is this, that was there, you say, no, 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 I have none, I have visited that. You won't accept that. So the realization of the truth is what is always pressed in our religion. You have to achieve, you have to realize the Brahma Jnana. The Brahma Jnana, the self-knowledge, the knowledge of the Atma, knowledge of the, the Paramatma, that you must have. That's why Sri Ramakrishna emphatically, in the beginning, he said, Ishwar love Manushya Jivaned Uddeshya. The only goal of human life is nothing but realization of God. Why? Because there is the source. Otherwise, you won't be. But you have to make it understandable to the people. What is Ishwara? How I am going to realize him? What is going to happen after realization? So all these things you have to analyze. That's called philosophy. <coughs> so Sri Ramakrishna realized and gave the truth. Lord is there, God is there. You have to realize. Vivekananda came and gave the philosophy. How you can do with that? Each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest the divinity within by controlling nature. 
external and internal nature. Uh, your behavior, your thought process should be controlled. So you are going and behaving in a very bad manner. And then you think that you will realize, God, it is not possible. So you have to control the external. And some people are coming and provoking you. And you should be quiet, calm, and constantly thinking about your goal. It's all external. Internal, you have to go on giving the suggestion to your mind. I am going to achieve this. You have to be 100% sure that if you achieve that, that's the great thing going to happen in your life. So that is called the philosophy and the realization. And philosophy gives all the answers to your doubts and makes you confirm. And then you are very happy. You can go through that. Rishis of the world realize that one and record the experiences in the Upanishad. So this is one. They recorded their experiences of the one in one particular place that's called Upanishad. And second, Vedavyasa came and he realized the same truth. Then there afterwards analyzed it in a very nice way. That's called Brahma Shutras. Shutras means the thread. So he gave us the thread. And with this, if you go, slowly you will reach to the truth. The Brahma Shutras. There's a beautiful story about the Shivaji Maharaj, that he and his son was arrested somewhere. And then a thin thread, slowly, his followers, that sent it to him. And the thin thread, he was slowly, slowly pulling up and then the big rope, strong rope came and from with the help of the rope he could come out and escape. So the thread, sutra, that's called Brahma Sutra. The thread has been given. But what is the thread? Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Come, now you have to ask about, inquire about the Brahman. You have to inquire, otherwise we just go on telling, sometimes the young people will come and they are, because the parents ask them to sit and they will be sitting and they will be looking like this and they will be trying to get the mobile from the father so that they can work on that. So like they are, they are, they are sitting over here, the body is here, the mind is somewhere else. And similarly many of the people, they will be going over there and then after that nothing. So one must be very, very sincere. So, Brahma Shutra has been given, but even that is also not good for us. So, who will read Brahma Shutra is so difficult. So, comes the great revivalist Adi Shankaracharya. Why we mention Adi? Because there are still Shankaras. Because there is a post. Shankaracharya himself established that. There are four Shankaracharya in India. Because of the Matha Adhisha, they say. But unfortunately, they have, I don't know, that, that capacity, both spiritual and intellectual, philosophical, otherwise you simply go and sit on the post is nothing. So once we went to mm, the visit that uh, presidents, uh, the India, the president, that the, the Jail Singh was there, he invited us. The one Swami was there the, with us, very old. And you know, sometimes the Swamis are just like the child, children. And he told, hey, whose chair is this? Well, the president of India. I will sit over. I will, you cannot <laughs> sit like that. So, but <laughs> the guards and the, uh, the, the person who was taking us over there, of course, we were invited by the president, so we are highly respected guests over there. But still then, you cannot go and sit in the chair. And that is also, an enclosure was there. But he went through under that and sat on that. So today I am the president of India. You are still here. Come, otherwise you will be in the jail. <laughs> and not only you, all of us. <laughs> so somehow we had to bring him back and he came and he was boasting. You know, I sat on the chair, but that is nothing. It's very difficult to sit over there. It's not comfortable at all. He was telling his experience, sitting on the chair of the president of India. So that is the experience the Shankaracharya, he
he said that you have to understand this how he is going on giving the wonderful meaning of the scriptures and trying to understand how people will be able to realize it how easily i can give it <coughs> shami vivekananda he said i like to give the vedanta philosophy at the highest vedanta philosophy to the ordinary people how soaked in devotion and fried in karma so that <laughs> i will give it to them so it will be very very palatable and they will accept it so this way shankara also the same truth he realized and he gave the philosophy and that philosophy is called i i just mentioned that uh, the veda vyasha he gave not only brahma shudra gita also gita is also a vedantic book is a gist of the vedanta and shankara he explained only this three what upanishad then brahma shudra and bhagavad gita these three are termed as prasthana traya traya means three and prasthana means exit so like that three prasthana you can go back to your source through these three that's called the exit route so this prasthana traya and he gave from the view point of pure advaita kevala advaita the advaita is no two but again there are many other philosophies are also there but shankara says no this only that shankara realizing the difficulties of the ordinary people uh, intending to help them to understand the advaita vedanta not only gave the commentaries on that he wrote prakarana granta prakarana that is a helping the scriptures the prakarana granta granta means the scripture the prakarana granta sometimes in verse and sometimes in prose and also the the among these many he wrote and will be because the there is called the fragrance of the vedanta that it, it will go not only the vivek churamani we will study the vivek churamani then the other 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 that different that is very difficult for people they don't know about that also and they directly try to reach the upanishad and after trying some few pages they simply keep it in the almira then don't try and they say oh this is all bogus nothing is there it's very difficult to understand the truth so that's why the prakarana granta will help us so here we find one is shata sloki shankaracharya gave the shata sloki shata means the 100 a sloka means the the poems or the sloka we can say so the 100 verses are there and that way he is giving the example shata sloki sarva vedanta sara samgraha another book is there sarva vedanta there are different type of approaches of the vedanta veda anta veda means knowledge the end of that but the approaches are different the explanations are different sarva vedanta sara that is that he has taken out all the gist of that best one and presented sarva vedanta sara samgraha and is having thousand verses and then upadesha sahasri sahasra again thousand the upadesha the advices and this is the mixture of prose and verse then comes the viveka churamani all the verses 581 verses viveka means discrimination chura that is the crest money is the jewel so on the top of that they so this is the best book viveka churamani in the form of a dialogue between the teacher the guru and the student the shishya expounding the advaitic truths and ending with the experience of the shishya when you complete that ultimately it will be it will end in the experience of the shishya then he will feel and joy 
and he will express that. And the last sloka, Shankara is giving that expression. And this is the non-difference, expression of the non-difference. One thing we will notice when we will study the Vivek Churamani, we will notice one thing, the never ever mention of bhakti, the personal God, no personal God. So that is in the Vivek Churamani, no personal God has been, no mention of the personal God has been there in the Vivek Churamani. Now Advaita Vedanta, it accepts only Brahman and Brahman with two different aspects. So this is very interesting. One is Nirguna Brahma, another Saguna Brahma. That this Nirguna Brahma is a transcendental aspect of the Brahman, the truth. We sometimes call it truth, sometimes call it being, and sometimes call it Brahman, sometimes call it Paramatma, or sometimes only Atma. The same thing in different names. So here, the Nirguna Brahma, that is one without any qualities. But how this world has come? So it says, Saguna Brahma. So why we are telling this? Because unless and until we keep in our mind, this is the background. The Brahman is completely unchangeable, eternal truth. But we are going to analyze it through the manifested world with so many names and forms. How you will do that? Then say it's the same Brahman, it's called Saguna Brahma. The Saguna Brahma means empirical aspect of the truth. That is the Babuharika and Paramarthika. These are the two terminologies. Paramarthika Satya. That there, the one person came to his guru and said, give me the Brahma, that knowledge of Brahman. He said, you have to give the Guru Dakshina first. But I, you have not taught me anything. First you teach and then only will give you. Well, no, first you give. Because the moment I will teach you, there will be no difference between you and me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't like to lose my... Well, first you give now, as because they are still there, the difference is there. So Guru Shishya, so the Shishya has come and he says that you have to pay me first, then only I will teach you. Why? The moment you realize that, there is no difference at all. There is no difference. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he told this truth to his beloved disciple Vivekananda. See, today I saw this image that he used to worship the goddess Kali. And this all the things that are in front of me, the, that I use for worship, and that cat over there, and that building, this temple, everything is nothing but Brahma. So obviously, it was too much for that young mind, Narendranath. He came and he sat with his, another gentleman who was there, Pratap Achara, at the age he was, the, as Pratap Hasra was uh, almost like Sri Ramakrishna's age, but Narendra used to call him as friendo, friend, so friendo. So he said, you know this, what Sri Ramakrishna was telling today? The, all the utensils are also gods, and both of them were having a great love. Sri Ramakrishna came, touched him, and he got for three days and three nights that wonderful experience of Advaita Vedanta. So this is possible. Even those people, just by touch, they can transform you. Just by word, they can transform you. So that is Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma. From the Nirguna Brahma, slowly all these things are coming. So Paramarthika Satya, Paramartha. That the highest truth, Paramarthika Satya, Bhavaharika Satya. We must understand these, otherwise there's a lot of confusion about the one person, he heard that the lions are the carriers of Goddess Durga. And then he went to the cave of the lion 
to embrace where God is putting us there. And Lion, of course, had a wonderful lunch, perhaps. So, but the person should have understood that in reality, what is this? So that reality is one and truth is another. They are not separate, but right this moment. That the one of our Swamiji I told you, he said very wonderfully, when he was explaining that Brahman is all and not, nothing but Brahman, then he said, suppose someone has a thief or entered into our, our house. Is a Brahman? So shall you, how we are going to worship the thief? He said, by calling 911. <laughs> so, <laughs> because the Paramarthika Satya and Bhavaharika Satya. The Bhavaharika means that the expression, how I am going to live these things in the Bhavahara slowly, slowly, when you reach to that height, then there is no problem. E example, that when the Lord Buddha was entering into a forest path, the people in the villages, they told, sir, you should not go into that. There's a terrible person is there. His name is Anguli Mal. And he always killed people. And to count that, how many people I have killed, he take their finger and keeps as a garland. So Anguli Mala, Mala, the garland. So he's a very ruthless person. You should not go. But there was confidence that he can change anyone that comes before. So he went, Angulimala came, and he talked with Angulimala, transformed that person. That is the power of religion. Sri Ramakrishna changed one person. He was a thug. He was hired by someone to kill and beat Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna didn't talk to him, only with the one finger touched his chest. And the Manmatha Gunda, Gunda means that uh, the in the in uh, in Bombay they say Dada <laughs> and then the confusion in Bengali Dada means elder brother <laughs> and in Bombay Dada means is a, the gang leader <laughs> the one <laughs> Bengali people a person came from Calcutta and he was addressing someone over here and is, he is from again from Maharashtra he said Dada can you please tell me don't call me Dada I am not no Dada <laughs> no no <laughs> there is an <laughs> that is all problem came because of the meaning, you know, and it's a one in different. So, Sri Ramakrishna, he only touched that person with one finger. That person immediately transformed into a religious person. And from then onwards, he went and started practicing yoga, meditation, Trataka yoga, looking at the sun, right from the sunrise up to the sunset, whole process. He will constantly look and concentrate on that. Day after day, he became a very holy person. All the neighborhood people they used to come and pay respect to him. Transformation. It is possible. These are the examples, the what type of people, how they have changed. Angulimala also was changed. So there's Paramarthika Satya. That is the Brahman. That's called Adhara. Adhara means which is holding. So all this universe with all multifarious, so many varieties, where it is resting, Adhara is necessary. What is that Adhara? That is Brahman. So substratum of the Jagat, and Jagat is known as Prapancha. So all the Sanskrit terms, this is Prapancha. Prapancha means it has been mixed five elements mixed together and they have created so mixture of five things so anything that is mixture the natural is going to break so this prapancha another name of the jagat that manifested universe which is aropita now it is superimposed on something else what is that brahman now the light is going and then it is reflecting on a white cloth. There is the sh and over that, all the movies, pictures are coming. If it is not there, it just open, you won't be able to see the movie. Of course, nowadays, the another type of rays have come, they can show it. But that is a different thing. But the movie, it needs some adhara. 
something on which it will work and that Brahman is the Adhara. Now whole world, the whole world is Brahman, only appearing as many in different names and forms. At this stage, Brahman is termed as Saguna Brahma. The Brahman without any epithet is Nirguna Brahma. Brahman with the qualities is called Saguna Brahma. If you, the last year I gave the retreat on Tantra, there with the picture and I explained, if you can, some of you uh, attended, if you can remember, there are three Shivas are there. The first Shiva is just dead body. No action, nothing is there. Then second Shiva is opened his eyes. And the third Shiva has taken the form of Kali, creating the whole world. So three stages, Nirguna Brahma, then Saguna Brahma, then Ishwara. So that explained over here, the Nirguna Brahma is the first that, in, and the Tantric, they will first there'll be a Shiva just lying like a dead body. And on that, another Shiva also like, lying on that, but with the open eyes. Majority of the images that we see, these two. But the first one, they don't use. In the pictures also, we don't find. But the tantric truth, if you like to study, the first Shiva is that Paramarthika Satya. There's no activity, nothing is there. Raja, Satya, Tama, no Gunas are there. The second one, just captured that Sattva Guna, Raja Guna, and opened his eyes, reflecting it on the third aspect of the Shiva, same Shiva, in the form of Kali. Kali is not a mother, Kali is not a lady. But why he has given the mother form? Because we can understand it easily. The creating, sustaining, like that we can understand. So. The same Shiva, when in that form creating, etc., here in Vedanta they call Ishwara, Tantra they call Kali. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, Whom you call as Brahman, I call as Kali. It's not just I, that's because I love Kali and I'm forcing it. Not like that. It's with Jukti, with the argument. So this. When the Nirguna Brahman is conceived as Saguna Brahma, with the capacity to create the universe, cosmic process, universe means cosmic process, with the help of Maya, another word is coming, with the help of the Maya, then it is known as Ishwara. So the, this three, third, first is completely transcendental Paramarthika Brahman. Second is a, the Brahman with the Gunas, the Saguna Brahma. And the third, the Saguna Brahma, again, when it is creating the whole universe with the help of the Maya. The Maya is a word that is in the Upanishad. That this word, Shankaracharya used this so nicely to explain the creation from the point of view of the Advaita, how the creation came. Other religion, if you go, particularly Semitic religion, no explanation in that way. They only say, in the beginning there was sound, and from the sound all the things came. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Almost like us. Because how the God is working then, Ishwara, how he will work? He will go and start digging this thing and that thing, building, not like that. Icha matra. And that same Ishwara who is creating Icha matra has been depicted in a beautiful form, Jagannatha. In the Jagannatha, that Murti, if you see, it is not having the hands, not legs, only two eyes without eyelid. That, that is called Jagannatha. And he is Jagatnatha. He is the master of the universe. He is creating. He is doing everything. How? Icha matra. 
He just wishes. Let there be light, there was light. The Christians are telling, I don't know whether they're understanding this ultimate thing or not. This metaphysical truth, Nirguna Brahman, has been expressed in the philosophical languages as Sarvam Kalu Idam Brahman. So all that was there. Now in the philosophical term, when they are mentioning Sarvam, all, Kalu, truly, Idam, Brahman. These Brahman that you see is truly Brahman, all that you see. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, each soul is potentially divine. Potential. So where from? Suddenly he is telling just because in the English language he is telling like that. No. It's based on the truth and the realization. In the Kakri Ghat, he realized that in the northern India, the Almora, that is Kakri Ghat is there, still there. And there he realized that all that we see in the world is the manifestation of the same Brahman, one Brahman. And he was full of joy. If that realization he got with the touch of his guru. But now, with his own effort, he came to know that truth and he was very, very happy. I have solved my life's problem, he said to his brother disciple. I have solved my life's problem. The everything is within me which is there in the universe. Microcosm, macrocosm. These are the beautifully he has given those at the in, in the Jnana Yoga. He explained that. Now this is called Sarvam Kalu Idam Brahma. Kalu means truly. And I am Atma Brahma, this self that you see within us, that the doctors, they feel it that is going on beating constantly with the moment, the beating is not properly, immediately they are concerned. And when it stops, okay, the all concerns are done. So, <laughs> so only that beating, what is that? We are not very much aware of it. Nowadays, people are health conscious means the heart should be all right, the, the food, the, these and that. That is, But what is that which is actually making the heart beat? And then the whole process, complicated process, in the body and mind going on? So one young boy, is, he was practicing the yoga in the wrong way. The, uh, the online yoga teachings nowadays so he and then afterwards he lost his brain now the whole body is there young man of hardly 25 24 25 and now he has lost his brain because of the wrong way of practicing the yoga so this is it happens everything is there but the mind has become irrational and he cannot work the parents are also now abusing him. Why? You are not working over here and sitting and only eating, etc., etc. Now, <laughs> that day he rang me. He always, I, I told, see, Saturday and Sunday you should not ring me because I'm busy from Monday. Mon Monday, three, and uh, many times he, and I always picked up the phone and talked with him. And he was telling, my father was telling, I am not earning at all, but that's not true. And I am getting $1,500 from the government. That is on my earning. <laughs> the social security, something like that. Yeah. Isn't it? I'm sure. Why not? Tell your father. I am earning. So 1,500 is sufficient for me. But still, father is expecting as a son, you should be successful. Strive that too. Don't give up. So slowly, slowly. So this is going on. This Atman, it is where? We do not know. But Atman is the only thing, most important thing for us. That therefore, the difference between the two Brahman is only in the manner of conception. The conception is, I am Brahman, but I do not know. I am the prince, but I do not know. So that's only. So that is the main purpose of Vivek Chudamani 
to describe the intellectual approach by analyzing the inner self, Jivatma, and comparing it with the cosmic self, Paramatma. The main purpose we will find over here in the Vivek Churamani, that it will take us slowly, slowly to that, that you are that. How? So first, they will say, you have to prepare yourself, otherwise you won't understand. The preparation, how to prepare, that he will say. And then he will go on giving you the examples and slowly it will, we will go. And as because, you know, the <coughs> in the traditional way, in the Indian tradition, the any truth, they will be telling it so many times, in different languages, but the same truth many times they will say. Here we will find, Shankara is telling, spiritual life is only yours and no one can help you, not even the guru. Guru is the guide, he will show you this is the path, but you have to travel. Even your parents won't be able to help you, no one can help you. Then he gives the example. Suppose a father has taken loan, then his son can repay back, that, that way he can help the father. But spirituality is not like that, it is yours. Again, if someone is carrying a heavy load, then another person comes and help him to lift it. That is possible, but spiritually is different, it is yours. So again and again, again and again, they will, so I give the class in the university students, they say the same thing they are telling again and again. And so because the, all those people are like my intellect, you know that, unless you tell, go on telling, they, they won't understand. You are all PhD students, so naturally, once uh, anything you are suggested, you will understand. And uh, not like that. Sri Ramakrishna used to go to different places, he used to tell the same thing again and again. And his companion, constant companion, that uh, uh, was, he used to look after Sri Ramakrishna, he said, why you tell the same thing again and again? So the, that is, that I will do. What is that to you? <laughs> if you don't <laughs> You know, the we again and again when you are telling, as the mothers, they always tell, tell the same thing to the children again and again. Why? So that it's embedded in their mind and they ultimately understand that. Once you say, if you don't study and you're going to suffer, do you think any children will listen to it? And when they will suffer, it's, oh yes, once only, he should have tol told me some other time. So. <laughs> or she should have. So naturally, the, it is necessary to tell again and again whom you love. So this rishis, they love us. So they say things, but what we will do when you are studying this, we'll club it. And then, these are the, th the slokas which is meant for this. These are the slokas meant for this. So that we will study. The Jibatma and Paramatma comparing again and again. And we will understand that. Shankara will teach us how Maya, with its two power, what is the power of the Maya? Aparana Shakti and Vikshepa Shakti. This is the way the whole Vedanta explains how one has become many, only these two power, Aparana and Vikshepa. This is specially Shankara's. He is using the word Maya and then using the two power of the Maya to explain how from one so many millions varieties have come without changing. The one has not changed at all. So that way he says Avarana Shakti covering and Bhikshepa Shakti. And the traditional way they always say there was a rope and you covered that rope first. You don't see the rope. Avarana. Avarana means covering. And the Vikshepa. What is that Vikshepa? You were imposing on that rope as a snake. It was the only rope. Who covered that? You. And who imposed the snake on the rope? You. How you have done that? Through Maya. Maya compelled you to do that. See the how nicely the Vedanta will go. It is not like Ten Commandments. The God from the heaven came and told me these are the things you have to do. They are all only moral things. You should not tell lies, you should not beat others. These are all basic moral things. 
when you are studying Vedanta, it is expected that you have already overcome that. And then only you will understand the import of the Vedanta. So this, this is the, if the jiva can remove the upadis, another terminology. If the jivas can remove the upadis, what are the upadis? What do you mean by the upadis? Hmm? No, so give the example. What are the upadis? No, that is the terminology. Uh, give the example. No, there's a jiva. Yeah, no, that is like the sister. Mm. Now, the jiva, uh, because of the upadis, they are not realizing the truth. You have to remove the upadis. That's uh, imposed qualities. So now give us an example. Same person can be judged, can be somebody in a different role. So he has different attributes, though he is the same person. So there can be similar examples. Almost like that. But the best example is, you know? Hmm? And uh, no. no, the moment you say I am a man yeah. and I am a woman and I am a child, I am a old, I am educated, I am uneducated, all the upadis. Mm. So the upadis, the moment they say upadis, we are un unnecessarily you are thinking. It is only the same thing. I give the example because in the modern time it is very easy that that one bulb is there and the tube light is there. Both are giving the light. But the tube light, it has a different name. It has a different form and size. And different type of light it gives. Activity is also different. Bulb is also the same way. But inside both, bulb and the tube, electricity is there. So when you see that, you remove that, you are not a bulb or an or what's called the tube light, and the yellow or the white, or long or the small, nothing is there. What remain? Electricity. The same way, if you just upadhi bihina jiva is shiva. Upadhi bihina jiva is shiva. That much. But to only remove this upadhi, it takes lives after lives. So that is the problem. So upadhis, when you remove the upadhis, the superimposed qualities that makes you the, now in the Mahabharata, we'll quote and then we'll end up, and the next class again we'll discuss. Mahabharata, that it says wonderfully, Amrita Chaiva Mrittuscha, Amrita Chaiva Mrittuscha, Dvayam Dehe Pratishtitam. So very simple, right? Amrita, eternity, amrityuscha, the end, both are doyam, both doya, dehe, in the cell, pratishthita, it is there. Now, mrittu apadhyate mohat, when you are mohagrasta, you think that I am going to die, you will get the mrittu, the end. Satyena apadhyate amritam. But when you get that truth, that I am not dying, only the body is changing. I am eternal. Then you get the amrita. The both are there in the body. One is now, we should not misunderstand it. That is the problem. One son and the mother, they were in a mother-son relation. They were very, very close to each other. The son was, he studied, I came to know it from the newspaper. He was a scientist and he studied the, uh, it's called that uh, leather technology and all that. And he was working as an officer. Then afterward, after coming back from the office, he used to uh, sit with the mother and uh, see that uh, TV. So one day the mother told uh, that the son, see when I die, there's something they were observing and the she commented, 
but it's not the death actually. I come back to the same body. Mother was wrong. We come back, but not, may not be in the same body, and mostly not in the same body. So we come back truly, but she told wrongly that after death, we come back to the same body. So when I am dead, don't cry for me. I'll be in the same body again afterwards. And the son took it seriously, literally. After the death of the mother, he removed all the internal body parts, preserved the body scientifically, and kept over there in the freezer for three months, or three, three years. Can you imagine? Three years, the same body of the mother used to go and see mother is there. Mother will come back in life. So he started waiting. Then somehow some of the neighbors, Indian neighbors, they are very good. They will, even if you don't ask them to enter, they will come and they will check your house and then found. So that this is wrong, they in, informed the police and police came and all these things. Were. So that it is true that soul is eternal. But it is not true that the same soul will come and reside in the same body. That is wrong. So when the scripture is telling something, we should have the intellect to understand the true meaning of the thing. So that it says, Amritas chaiva mrittuscha doyam dehe pratishtitam. Doyam dehe pratishtitam. Both are there in this body. If mrittu apadhyate mohad when you are confused and thinking this is the only life I am living, so it is mrittu, it is the end for you. But satena apadhyate 